J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with All's Fair and Love and War from the Gold Diggers of 1937. When you go to the theater or the movies, you always expect the entertainment to reach a thrilling climax. And the same thing is true of a dinner. So if you want your dinner to wind up on a really exciting note, by all means, serve Jell-O for dessert. A gay, colorful mold of it in any of Jell-O's six delicious flavors. Jell-O is truly delicious and full of the refreshing flavor of fresh white fruit. Jell-O always brings a touch of color and joy to the end of any meal. So order genuine Jell-O from your grocer tomorrow and you'll be sure of that extra rich fruit flavor which makes Jell-O the most popular gelatin dessert in the world. But ex- no substitute. Get the real thing. Genuine Jell-O. Gentlemen, we bring you the Hollywood fashion plate whose pockets bulge from his tailor's bills, Jack Benny. Well, well. Ah, again, this is Jack Benny, your Beau Brumel speaking. Now listen, Don, this new spring suit of mine is paid for. And you'll have to admit that I do look pretty nifty, don't I? At the risk of losing my job, no. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. It's a pretty swell suit. I've been looking in the mirror all afternoon, and we ought to know. Oh. <laughs> hey, Don, that's a snappy spring outfit you're wearing. Uh, tailor-made, isn't it? Yes, yes. Do you like it? Oh, yeah, yeah. It looks like it was made for the Ritz brothers. <laughs> well, one thing, Jack, it's individual. There's not another one in the whole country like it. Well, naturally, there's no cloth left. <laughs> Say, Don, Don, yeah. come here another, will you? Right. Get a load of that. Huh? <laughs> well, come here. Okay. All right, Jack, I'm right here, yeah. Right. Get, get a load of that sport coat Phil Harris is wearing. You know? <laughs> it is loud, isn't it? Loud? It's the first time I ever saw a sunset with a belt in the back. <laughs> Say, Phil. Yes, Jack. Look, Phil, I don't like to be bossy, but I wish you'd dress more conservatively, especially for this program. After all, you're not a Toreador. What about that coat you've got on? Now, what's the matter with it? Well, it looks like your tailor took a crazy quilt and put buttons on it. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I like this coat, and I bought it. Well, if you ever get tired of it, you can grind it up into chili. <laughs> well, still trying to get your watch back, eh? Well, it won't work, old fellow. <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Gee, look at you all dressed up. Wow. Yeah, how do I look? You look like you were thrown out of the Easter parade. <laughs> that's so. Uh, that's an old suit, isn't it? It is not. And anyway, it's how you wear it. You don't see any holes in this suit, do you? A moth with any pride wouldn't go near it. <laughs> Atta girl, Mary. Atta girl, Mary. Atta girl, Mary. <laughs> now, listen, fellas, you can kid all you want to, but if you want to know the truth, I'm considered the best-dressed man in Hollywood. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, who was that? Uh, Adolph, mind you. Uh, what's he laughing about? I bought this suit from his gardener. You know what kills me? When a fellow tries to... Come in. Special degree for Mary Livingston. Uh, I'm Mary Livingston. I know, just sign here. Hmm, a little fresh there, buddy. There you are. Thanks, miss. Huh, get out of that suit. <laughs> Wise guy. Who's the, uh, who's the letter from, Mary? Uh, from my mother. I'll read it. Oh, your mother again. Why doesn't she get her own program? Well, oh, just forget about it. We haven't got time. Hey, Jack, here comes Kenny all dressed up. Boy, I'll bet he knows it's spring, too. 
I'll give you two to one he don't. <laughs> well, look at him, all dolled up in sport clothes. Hello, Kenny. Ain't I something? <laughs> yes, yeah, but I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> Where'd you get that outfit, Kenny? Oh, from a little tailor around my neighborhood. Pretty cold, isn't it? Cold looks more like a vest to me. <laughs> Did those sleeves fall off again? <laughs> Turn around there. Let me look at you, Kenny. Hmm, nice material. But look, isn't that coat awfully long? Well, the pants aren't finished yet. Oh. <laughs> Don't let him kid you, Kenny. You look all right. Those are new shoes you got on, too, aren't they? Yeah, but they hurt like the dickens. Well, they'll stretch. Say, do you think they'd feel better if I took the shoe trees out? <laughs> Don't you do that, Kenny. It'll, it will. Say, Jack, what? you ought to hear this letter from my mother. Gee, she's cute. Well, as long as she's cute, go ahead and read it. Okay. Uh, Newark, New Jersey, April 8th. Newark? I thought your folks lived in Plainfield. Uh, there was a cyclone. Oh. Uh, dear daughter Mary, I was happy to get your letter and glad to know that you are well. I was so excited when I talked to you on the phone last Sunday that I forgot to turn off the gas range. How do you get oatmeal off a ceiling? <laughs> Tell her to stand on her head when she mops the floor. We had a lovely Easter, except for one thing. Your brother Hillard mixed the egg dyes in your father's derby. <laughs> and when your father put his hat on, was his face red? <laughs> also blue, green, and yellow. Nice family you've got. Uh, but everything turned out all right as he went to a masquerade that night dressed as a rainbow. Well, that was quick thinking. Yowza. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun on April Fool's Day, too. Everybody was here for dinner, and we sold your Uncle Herman's knife and fork to the tablecloth. Well, that must have been funny. It would have been some joke if Uncle Herman didn't eat with his hands. <laughs> That's fine. Doesn't he ever use his knife and fork? Only to comb his hair. Oh. Uh, the dinner was strictly formal. Everybody kept their shoes on. I hate those ritzy affairs. Uh, right in the middle of the meal, a funny thing happened. The cat jumped on the table and knocked over Papa's bottle of gin. Papa got so mad, he gave the cat a milky thin. Milky thin? Isn't that awful? Uh, <laughs> Did I tell you that your grandpa came to visit us last week, and he acts the same as ever? Oh. Uh, last night, we caught him sharpening his beard so he could use it for a shoehorn. Now, he find out if he sleeps with a shoehorn over the quilt or under the quilt. Uh, no other news except that your cousin Rita and her husband aren't getting along. They're always fighting. That's too bad. Uh, this morning, they borrowed our axe to make in beds. <laughs> No more news or ink. So we'll close with love to you, Jack, John, Kenny, Phil, Strawberry, Raspberry, Cherry, Orange, Lemon, and Lime, and the millions of people who eat it every day. Yours truly, Mrs. Livingston. Well, I'm glad that's over. Oh, oh here's some more, Jack. Mm. Uh, P.S., there was another cyclone, and we're back home. <laughs> well, there's only one thing that can top that. Sing, Kenny. <laughs> Yeah. 
was Moonlight and Shadows from the Jungle Princess, sung by Kenny Baker in his own inimitable way. And very good, Kenny. Oh, you always say I sing good. Well, you do, don't you? Yeah, but you don't have to rub it in. <laughs> Isn't Kenny fast on repartee tonight, Mary? Huh? He's got a mind like a snail with a rheumatism. Yeah. <laughs> I see, Mary, you're keen. <laughs> Keep that up, Kenny, and someday you'll be stocking your beard. You know? I, I ruined that gag myself there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> as we haven't done a play in some time for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to present our original hair-raising melodrama, that panorama of surging emotion, that symphony of the great outdoors, entitled... See who that is, Mary. Why, it's Gracie Allen. Mm, hello, Gracie. Well, Jack, Benny, of all people, what are you doing here? <laughs> Stuff up the microphone, fellas. Well, Gracie, this is a surprise. Well, not to me. Uh. Judge Apogee sent me over here to give you an important message. He knows he can trust me on account of I'm unreliable. Well, why didn't he come himself? Why? Yeah. Why? Well, he had to stay there so you'd know where the message came from. Oh. You see, if he came over here, he wouldn't have had to send me with the message. Oh. But the message is to you, and you're here. Uh, so, yeah. it would be very silly for me to go somewhere else with a message for you. <laughs> How would it? <laughs> well, I think that... Oh, uh, hello, Mary. Uh, Did you have a good time in New York? Ooh, gee, what a cute hat. Do you like it? Oh, it's beautiful and so original. Just like mine. I must have made it yourself. <laughs> they are alike, only mine's got something under it. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> But mine, uh, mine is just plain. I like simple things. Have you seen George? <laughs> no, but what's the what's the message he sent to me? The message? Yeah. The oh, the oh, message. Oh, Jack, uh, do you think that about him? Oh, well, well, well. Here's George for you now. Give me a kiss. Hey, wait a minute. Gracie, Gracie, that's Don Wilson. Oh, it is not. Don Wilson is a box of Jello. <laughs> John Wilson is our announcer, and anyway, he's twice as big as George. Well, who cares? I'm not going to lift him. <laughs> oh, and Jack, who's this cute little boy? That's Kenny Baker, our tenor. Say hello, Kenny. Hello. Oh. <laughs> you're cute. I I'll bet you're smart, too. Am I? I got a mind like a snail with a rheumatism. <laughs> oh, snails with rheumatism. Oh, that must be delicious. <laughs> See what you started, Mary? How can a snail get rheumatism? Sleeping in a shell with the window open. <laughs> I don't get it. That we know. Now, look, Gracie, we have a program to do. Have you thought of the message yet? Uh, what message? The message George sent. Oh, you can give it to me later. Now, look, you told me that... I give up. Look, Gracie, it doesn't have anything to do with your starting a new program on the air tomorrow night, does it? No, this is something important. Well, isn't that important? You and George are going on the air for grape nuts. We get money. <laughs> Quiet, Mary. They'll want it, too. Say, Phil, find out if there is... This is still the Jell-O program, will you? It certainly is, with those six delicious flavors. Mm -hmm. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and tomato juice. <laughs> now, look, Gracie, if you'll just sit down now and be quiet, we'll go on with the play I was about to announce. Well, don't, don't mind me. Oh, uh, Harris is laugh. Oh, Phil, please. Phil, please, Phil, Phil, come down off the piano. Oh, no, not me. Oh. <laughs> Let's go over in the tuba where we can be alone. Yeah, yeah, do that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as our feature attraction this evening, we are going to present an old favorite. Why? <laughs> because. <laughs> One that I know... <laughs> That's nice. Right. One that I know you'll all be waiting to hear. Another thrilling episode of that rip-snorting drama of the West, Buck Benny Rides Again. Oh, <laughs> Gracie. Don't mind me. I won't be 
Sabo. No, I know that. <laughs> now, in our play this evening, Mary Livingston will again be Daisy Carson, my sweetheart. Don and Kenny will be my deputy sheriff. And if Phil Harris will come down off the piano, he can be pappy. Oh, oh what do I do, Jack? You can be quiet. <laughs> Is it much of a part? I hope so. <laughs> now, immediately after the next number, folks, we will take you to the little cow town of Rump State, Texas. <laughs> Where we find... Come in. Hello, Jack. Is Gracie here? <laughs> yes, George. Gracie is here, and I wish you'd keep her in your own yard. Well, I sent her over here to give you some tickets for our broadcast tomorrow night. Where is she? Well, here I am, Georgie Party. Put me down, Phil. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, look, Gracie, what did you do with those tickets I gave you to give Jack? Well, I put them in your pocket. Well, then it's lucky I came. Oh, so that's the message you had for me, Gracie. Well, oh, yeah. Why didn't you think of it before? I don't know. I must be slipping. Well, it's time you woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? I don't know. Hello, George. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I see things are just as crazy on this program. Well, thanks, George. Thanks for those tickets. Nice stuff, Taylor. And look, we're going to start... <laughs> we're going to start our play right after the next number. Uh, would you mind keeping an eye on Gracie? You know, keep her under control. Oh, you're nuts, too, huh? <laughs> well, do the best you can. Uh, play, Phil. Say, Georgie, hasn't Phil Harris got the radio hair? Yes, <laughs> gentlemen, we're going to present our latest episode of Buck Benny Rides Again, or Ready, Willing, and Lame. The scene is the office of the sheriff of Texas County. Gracie, 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 put that drum back in the orchestra. Oh, is the drummer too? <laughs> yes. Hmm, starting out, the scene is the office of the sheriff of Texas County, where we find Buck Benny busy opening his morning mail. Curtain. Music. Gone these wooden envelopes. Hey, deputies. Yes, yes sir. sir. Come here and help me open this letter. Why, Buck, you're prying off the top of your desk. Turn sure if I eat. <laughs> I'm getting into more trouble since I lost my glasses. This morning, I put the bridle on the wrong end of my horse. <laughs> Say, Sheriff. Yeah? You got your pants on backwards, too. 
Thanks. I've been looking for my hip pockets all morning. <laughs> Say, Wilson, any news on Cactus Face? Nope, ain't seen hide nor hair of him. Well, it's been going on long enough. We got to get that fit, huh? Dead or alive. Oh, isn't he wonderful, George? Quiet, Chrissy. Yeah. You know, boys? <laughs> Cactus Face has stolen every cow in these here parts. Fine state of affairs, not a cow left in the county. Oh, that's too bad. I'll be a cow for you. Moo! Quiet, quiet, quiet. Come on, Moon. Come on. Uh, Gracie, we're in the sheriff's office. We're in jail. Oh, yeah? Then where's my daddy? Now, Gracie, please. Well, my daddy's in jail more than your daddy, isn't he? Uh, Gracie, go ahead, Jay. Now, listen, deputies. Getting cactus face alive may be dangerous. Be on your guard and stick close together. Meanwhile, I'm going out and investigate. Good luck, Sheriff. Good luck, Sheriff. Good luck, Sheriff. Thanks, men. <laughs> Wish I had my glasses, though. I'm blind as a bat. Well, boys, if you need me, I'll be over at Daisy Carson. So long. <laughs> Doggone it, I thought there was a door there. <laughs> Well, a little ventilation won't hurt none. Go on, boys. Go on. Oh, wait. I'm going with you. Oh, no, you're not. Lock her up, man. Oh, okay. Hey. Steady there, partner. Daisy Carson's house. Step on it. Here. Here. Fuck, Benny, rise again. Daisy's house. I haven't been in here in over six weeks. Come in. Come in. Daisy, that's my line. Well, why did I say it? That's fine. You steal my part and then you want a reason. Well, <laughs> that's because they haven't got a reason. Mm, you're telling me. Uh, let's split it, Gracie. I'll say come and you stay in. All right. I wish somebody would say it. It's raining out here. <laughs> Hello, Daisy. Hello, tall, dark, and nearsighted. Well, gal, ain't seen you for some time. You sure look pretty. Lost a little weight, ain't you? That's the hall tree. I'm over here. <laughs> well, Daisy, it's spring. You know that old saying, in the spring, a young man's fancy like the curse of a horse of love. So I'm going to ask you once more to marry me. Will you, gal? Uh, what did I say last time, Buck? You said no. Well, add positively. <laughs> gal, when you say that, you're a tearing at my heart strings. I know I ain't much. And I ain't good at the end of the world. <laughs> like them now, city fellas. Underneath this old red shirt, beats a heart of gold. Oh, what acting. Isn't he wonderful, Mary? No. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> But we locked her up in a cell. Oh, George, he's thinking of my brother. Oh. My brother's name is Sal. Of course, we only call him Sal for short. His whole name is Sal. Oh, Imbecile, yeah. Is that the one who's living? No, no, he's the one who sings tenor. Oh, the tall one, yeah. The yeah. one who looks like a steam clam. Yeah, the pretty one. Yeah, the one with the face. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Save that for tomorrow night. Oh, yeah? Whose program is this? Is it your program or my program? It's my program. Well, then don't act like it's your program. <laughs> Gracie, please, go ahead, Jack. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> well, uh, well, deputies, or well, Daisy. <laughs> What's your pappy doing these days? I hear he's cut down on his drinking. Yep, he's only using one arm now. Oh, <laughs> How that brandy he was making turn out? Something went wrong with it and it hardened in the bottle. Too bad. A total loss, eh? Nope. Pappy just breaks the glass and eats it watermelon style. <laughs> Mighty practical idea. Say, Daisy. Daisy? Oh, what's your name? Mary or Daisy? Gracie. Oh, that's so great. Is my name. <laughs> I was saying... That... I, I like uh, Mary better than... Don't you, Gracie? Well, some daisies I like, Mary, and some daisies I don't. Oh, George! Gracie! Excusing Watson, Renard! Quiet! Quiet! (laughs) 
<laughs> Daisy. Daisy, where's your pappy? Uh, he was papering the room here this morning. That's the last I saw of him. Doc, that is new wallpaper, isn't it? Well, wait a minute. What's that big lump on the north wall? Here comes Pappy now. <laughs> Hello, Buck. Hello, Frank. Mind moving, little Buck? I gotta put some paper right there where you're standing. Pappy, you're not gonna paper the floor, are you? Shucks, honey. I thought it was the ceiling. Gosh, that's so happy. Isn't he cute? No, I am too. <laughs> Them darn Easterners are ruining our place. What was you saying, Buck? I was a saying you did a mighty good job paper and looks fine. Doggone it, Daisy. I got bad news for you. I got to tear down all this paper I put up. But, Pappy, it looks swell. Can't help it, honey. I lost my job. <laughs> I'll help you find it, Frank. Okay, look for a lump with a kick in her, Buck. <laughs> I'll, I'll look for a lump after a kick. Frank. <laughs> There's the phone, Daisy. Rip off the paper and answer it. Okay. Hello? Hello? Funny can't hear a thing. Thanks, Buck. You found my job. Uh, here. Here's the phone. Hello? Uh, just a moment. For you, Buck. Thanks. Hello? Hello, Deputy. What's that? You did? I'll be right with you. So long. What's up, Buck? My boy just located a hideout of Cactus Face Elmer. They're waiting for me down by the creek, and I'm heading that way. So long, gal. So long, Buck. Come on, partner. Get up. Get up, partner. Get up. Gracie, Gracie. Get up, partner. Gracie, Gracie. Come on, partner. Look, Gracie rides again. You get My own fault for starting this place, gal. Everybody would like to think of you an exciting dinner seven days a week, and no mistake. Of course, there's a limit to the number of kinds of meat or fish you can serve, but when you're thinking of dessert, there's no end to the number of ways in which you can serve Jell-O. And here's a new Jell-O dessert that's bound to make a big hit, orange and date cup. Just dissolve one package of orange Jell-O in one pint of hot water and then chill. Arrange two-thirds of a cup of cut-up oranges and two-thirds of a cup of chopped dates in sherbet glasses. When the Jell-O is slightly thickened, pour it over the fruit and chill until firm. It's refreshing and zestful, while the whole family will certainly enjoy it. So try orange and date cups soon to add that springtime touch to your menus. Order Jell-O tomorrow from your dealer, but be sure you get the real thing. Genuine Jell-O. Look for the big red letters on the box. The last number of the 28th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And I want to thank George Burns and Gracie Allen for dropping in on us this evening. Also, to wish them lots of luck on their new series of broadcasts from Grape for Grape Nuts over the same network starting tomorrow night. See your local paper for announcement of time. And uh, I hope to see all of my Los Angeles friends at the annual radio editor show at the Shrine Auditorium next Saturday night. Oh, Jack. What? <laughs> What's funny about that? You may laugh when Gracie did it. Good night, Paul. Good night. <laughs> J-E-L-L-O! This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.